Pitts and Gene Autry. I'm back in the saddle again. Out where a friend is a friend. Where the longhorn cattle feed on the lowly Jimson weed. I'm back in the saddle again. That's right, folks. It's another visit with all the gang here at Melody Ranch. There's Pat Buttram, the Cass County Boys, the Gene Autry Blue Jeans, Carl Cotner's Melody Ranch Hardway 6 featuring Alvino Ray, and yours truly, Charlie Lyon. Right now, though, meet the boss man himself, America's favorite cowboy, Gene Autry. I drove a herd of cattle down from old Nebraska way. That's how I come to be in the state of Iowa. I met a gal in Iowa, her eyes were big and blue. I asked her what her name was, she said, Sioux City Sioux. Sioux City Sioux, Sioux City Sioux. Your hair is red, your eyes are blue, I swap my horse and dog for you. Sioux City Sioux, Sioux City Sioux. There ain't no gal as true as my sweet Sioux City Sioux. Now I'm admitting I away, I owe a lot to you. Cause I come from Nebraska to find Sioux City Sioux. I'm gonna rope and tie her up, I'll use my old lasso. I'm gonna put my brand on my sweet Sioux City Sioux. Sioux City Sioux, Sioux City Sioux. Your hair is red, your eyes are blue. I swap my horse and dog for you. Sioux City Sioux, Sioux City Sioux. There ain't no gal as true as my sweet Sioux City Sioux. Well, howdy, everybody. Yes, sir, it's nice of you to drop by Melody Ranch today. And it's our intention to make you glad you came. Here's a song we told you about only a few weeks ago. Now, just about everybody is playing and singing. What is someone who kissed me and held me closely, then stole my heart? What is someone I trusted who gave no warning would ever part? She was last seen Hiding out in someone's heart She knew nothing Of the danger in her charms A jury may find her guilty But I'd forgive her If I could see A sign confession That she's repented and really wanted no one but me. She was last to me, hiding out in someone's arms. He knew nothing of the danger in her charms. A jury may find her guilty, but I'd forgive her if I could see. A sign confession that she's repeated and really wanted no one but me. Well, sir, much obliged to you, friends. And now, before we get started here with the. Uh, say, Mr. Archery, would you take a look at my mule dandruff here? She don't feel so good. She don't sound so good either. Yeah, she does look a little wobbly, like she can't stand up. What's wrong with her? Well, I rubbed her down with alcohol today, and she licked it all off. <laughs> Golly, just look at the poor critter there. <laughs> that stuff's made her real ornery. She just kicked a man up a tree today. Oh? Did you go up and get help? I couldn't. I was up the tree. <laughs> you know, Patrick... That mule of yours has rheumatism. No wonder she's ornery. Well, I know she's got rheumatism. She tried to cure it by sitting in my lap. Do you mean to tell me that you let dandruff sit in your lap? Certainly not. I ain't gonna let no mule make a hot water bottle out of me. <laughs> oh, gosh. Just look at poor dandruff, Mr. Ardery. She She's getting a little more sway-backed every day. A little sway-backed? 
He's the only animal I ever saw whose stomach starts from a kneel in possession. <laughs> I know, I, I rode her into town today, and you know, I dribbled her down the road like a basketball. <laughs> As a matter of fact, a policeman, he tried to give me a traffic ticket for riding her along the highway. Well, is taking a mule on a highway against the law? No, uh, but her stomach kept a racing the white line down the middle of the road. <laughs> But the laugh was on the policeman, though. Oh? Why was that? <laughs> well, I found out that little white line in the middle of the road, that was just a milk truck with a leaky can. <laughs> <laughs> just look, that poor little dandruff. <laughs> Do you feel bad, honey? Oh. <laughs> Maybe, I'll tell you, I'll make you feel better. I- I'll sing you a song, huh? Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> If she don't get some pep pretty soon, I'm going to have to get me a jalopy to get around in. And I can't really afford a tank full of gas every week and a garage for myself. I... Yes, Pat, but in the future, uh, you'll be better off sticking with dandruff. All you need is a warm spot in the barn, a rub down once a week, and a bag of oats every month. Well, now, I don't mind sleeping in the barn and rubbing myself down, but wouldn't I get sick eating oats every day? <laughs> Say, look, how silly can you be? Well, I, I just thought I'd crack a little joke. <laughs> well, crack it again. That one's been in cold storage too long. <laughs> Honestly, Pat, sometimes I think you have a super subnormal IQ. Well, gee, thanks. <laughs> you know, my third grade teacher, she said with a little more study, I could become mentally deficient. <laughs> Now what's wrong with that mule? Well, uh, come on, uh, she wants to leave. Come on, Dandruff, let's go. i got to take her over to the barn, see? She's itchy and uh, her back needs scratching. Well, that should be very easy. She isn't very tall. How many hands would you say? Well, look, Mr. Artery, if she had hands, she could scratch her own back. <laughs> come on, Dandruff. So long, Mr. Artery. <laughs> so long, Patrick. Well, I know it's quite a jump from Buttram to Bells, but the Cass County boys and Johnny Bond will explain it to you. Hear them bells, don't you hear them bells? Days ringing now, the glory of the land. Hallelujah. Hear them bells, don't you hear them bells? Days ringing now, the glory of the land. The house is getting old and the benches am worn and the Bible am a getting hard to read. But the spirit am there just as sure as you're born and I got all the comfort that I need. Hallelujah. Hear them bells. Hear them bells. Cotton and the corn till the feet and the hands are sore. Praying to gave a part to blow his horn so he won't have to work no more. Hear them bells, don't you hear them bells? Hear them bells. Days ringing now, the glory of the land. Hallelujah. Hear them bells, don't you hear them bells? Days ringing now, the glory of the land. Swell song, Cass County Boys and Johnny Bond. Every time I see her passing by, all I do is hang my head and cry. And I can't forget her, though I try. All I do is hang my head and cry. Oh, I know not how to ease my mind Since she left our world of love behind Every time I see her passing by All I do is hang my head and cry Golden love, oh golden love, you're gone But each broken dream still lingers on And my weary heart keeps asking why All I do 
is hang my head and cry. Foolish pride, oh pride, what have you done? You have made me lose my only one. Now each time I see her passing by, all I do is hang my head and cry. Nice going there, Mr. Autry. Nice going. Well, thank you, neighbors, and thank you too, Johnny. Uh, maybe this ain't the time to ask you, but uh, you never have told me whether I could go with you on that cattle drive over to Carsonville. Well, I don't know, Johnny. After the last trip, I'm not sure. Doggone it, Gene. I ain't been off the place in two months. And I promise, no trouble. Okay, I'm going to hold you to that promise. You know, it's a four-day drive, and it's tiresome work. So... I don't want to worry about you. Forget it, pal. I'll be as good as a schoolboy on parent-teacher's night. Those are the same words, almost, that Johnny used when he wanted to go on the drive last year. Some years, when we want to give our pasture a rest, we drive a large part of our Melody Ranch cattle onto some government grazing land. This time, we were leasing range in the foothills of Horizon Mountains, about 150 miles north of Sagebrush. It's a pretty ride through Hidden Valley, and Johnny and the other three boys and I really enjoyed it. Everything had gone along smooth enough, but on the third day out, things began to change a little. That freight wagon driver said it's only about two miles from our camp here to Silvertown. Yeah, I know. Don't remember ever being over there myself. Mm-hmm. Won't hardly be sun up when we pass through tomorrow. Probably won't remember the place next time either. Johnny kept on hinting and hinting, then finally came right out and asked if we wasn't going into town that night at all. Anyway, I was just saddle-weary enough that I was an easy mark for Johnny's insistence that we ride into Silverton and have a look around. Yes, Sir Gene, this is for me. Now look, son, before you lose your grip on that sir thing, let me warn you once more. Stay out of trouble. I promised, didn't I? Yeah, but just see that you don't forget it. Say, by the way, how much money you got on you? Oh, a little over a hundred bucks. Why? Oh, I just wondered. You know, there's open gambling in this town, and they've got ways of getting you into their games. <laughs> not Johnny Bond, they ain't. I hope not. Oh, oh, boy. Oh. Well, there's still a light in the office of the Cattlemen's Association. I'm going in and have a visit with them for a while. Okay, uh, I'm going next door there to the Silver Dollar Saloon and see what's going on. I'll see you later. All right, Johnny. But remember what I told you. Don't worry. Well, sir, there's an old saying about a man knowing all there is to know about women. You know, the same thing applies to a cowboy, too. Because he can handle himself well in so many different situations. Whether he's winning a checker game at a Fourth of July picnic, bulldogging a steer, or fighting his way out of a tight spot. Yes, sir, you just can't tell about a cowboy. That is, until there's a pretty girl around. Then he's sure to get as rattled and as frisky as a doggie when a heel fly bites him. Now, let's take Johnny Bond, for instance. He's a good hand and a right good boy, too. But he's always getting himself into a jam. Nothing serious, you understand, but just enough to be aggravated. And that's what I kept thinking of while he was in the Silver Dollar. Daisy, come here. Yeah, Leo, what's up? You see that young cowpoke standing over there? Oh, you mean the tall, slim one with a sucker look? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Go to work on him. It looks like he might be good for a couple of bucks. Yeah, he does at that. Okay, see you later. Oh, I'm sorry, I... Oh, excuse I... me, miss, it was my fault. Uh... <laughs> hey, wait a minute. What you crying about? Oh, it's nothing really, I... I just don't know how to do this kind of work. Work? You mean you work here? Well, it was the only place I could get a job. Oh, well, uh, what you supposed to do? Well, Mr. Mark, the man who owns this place, says I'm to try to get men to play roulette. Well, I just can't do it like the other girl. Huh? Well, if I didn't have to take care of a kid's sister who's been sick most of her life, I wouldn't be here. Now, look, Miss, uh, <laughs> wish you wouldn't cry like that. I'll, uh, that is, uh, well, if it'll help you out, I'll play a few dollars for you. Would you? Well, for you, I'll do it, and, and for your sister. Oh, you don't know what this means to me. The 
table's right over here. You're a stranger here, aren't you? Huh? Oh, yeah. Uh, me and my partner, Gene Autry, are just driving a herd of cattle through. We we made camp a couple of miles east of town. Oh, I see. And uh, well, the fourteen on the red is the winner. Well, better luck next time, friend. All right, make room for the little lady and the gentleman right in here, folks. That's fine. Now, what'll you have? A hundred in blues? Are you kidding? Give me five white ones. Uh, you did say five white ones? Oh, well, he, he, he just wants to play a few dollars, Keno. He's a friend of mine. Oh, I see. Well, in that case, here you are, cowboy. All right, get your money down, folks. Bet a little and win a lot, because here we go. <laughs> Well, Maisie, that cleans me out. Oh, gee, and I was pulling for you to win, Johnny. But I do appreciate what you've done for me and my sister. No, oh, it's okay. Well, Johnny, having a big Gene, time? Uh, now, look, Gene, I can explain this, you see? Yeah, I'll... forget it, forget it. Come on, we'd better get back to camp. Oh, Gene, I was just helping Maisie out of a tight spot. I, I didn't know that... Hey, where'd she go? She's gone looking for another sucker, sucker. Let's get out of here. Well, on the way back to camp, Johnny admitted he'd been taken. He told me all about how Maisie had gotten to him, got him gambling on the little black ball at the roulette table. And I figured maybe it was a lesson well learned, since it had cost him about a hundred bucks. I guess it hadn't been more than twenty minutes since we'd unsaddled our horses. Then who should come riding into camp but Maisie from the Silver Dollar? Oh! Oh, boy! Johnny, I'm so glad I found you. Hey, what are you doing here? After what you've done to me. Oh, please don't be mad, Johnny. I want to talk to you. You've done enough talking for one night. Now, wait a minute, Johnny. Uh, what's this all about, miss? Well, Mr. Autry, tonight when Johnny was in the Silver Dollar, some men overheard him tell me that you were driving cattle through here. Is that so? Well, I just found out that they're planning to break up your herd. Drive off part of it. What? Are you sure? Now, wait a minute, Jean. This ain't another trick of yours, is it, Maisie? Oh, no, honest, Johnny. This is the truth. I am sorry about tonight, but... Well, I wasn't going to stand by and see your herd rustled and maybe some of you get hurt. Well, um, what do you think we ought to do, Gene? I think we ought to get ready to give our friends a little welcoming party, Johnny. Me too. If you want me to, I'll ride in and get the sheriff and have him come out with some of his boys right away. All right, Macy. We'd appreciate that. In the meantime, Johnny and I will get ready for our callers. As soon as Macy left, Johnny and I worked out a plan and set back to wait for the sheriff Macy had gone after, or the wrestlers. Whichever showed up first. We didn't have to wait long. Well, 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 well. Uh, are you Gene Autry? That's right. Good. I'm Sheriff Jenkins, Autry. Major Clark told me you boys were expecting trouble. That's what we hear, Sheriff. Well, don't worry too much. The boys and I will see that nothing happens. Right, boys? What should we do first? Well, I think the first thing for us to do, Autry, is to ride over and get your other three men that are riding herd. That way we can all stand our ground against them rustlers together. What do you think? Chef, I think the rustlers are already here. Well, what are you talking about? Just what I said. Now reach all of you. Hey. Get the guns when these guys hit the ground, Johnny. Okay, Gene. Slim, right into town and get the real sheriff. Right, Gene. Pitch those guns over here. Uh, now, wait a minute, Audrey. You don't know what you're doing. Well, maybe not, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. If I'm wrong, then I'll apologize. But right now, I'm not taking any chances. Well, I didn't have to apologize, to say the least. Maisie was gone long enough to give the pony sheriff and the rest of her boys time to get the situation well under control, she thought. And then she came riding back. But she was right in the middle of camp before she realized what had happened. Oh, boy. Oh! Well, Mr. Autry, how does it feel to be taken for a... Hey, what's going on here? Get down off that horse, Maisie. Now line up over there with the rest of them until Slim brings the real sheriff out here. Well, why don't you say something? Do I have to? I suppose you want to ask me if I'm ever going to learn. Something like that. Well, how was I supposed to know Maisie was in cahoots with every crook in town? And say, how'd you know? Well, sucker, I'll tell you. Oh, now, Gene, cut that out. Well, Johnny, do you remember when that pony sheriff said he thought it would be a good idea for us to go over and get our other three boys who were riding night herd? Yeah, so what? So, how did he know that there were only three men? Unless he had already been over there and looked. Oh, I get it. I guess. Mm-hmm. 
But, uh, Gene. Yeah? Gene. What? You know something? What? I'm glad I ain't smart like you. Because then we'd both be smart and I wouldn't get in no trouble. And then you wouldn't get a chance to show me how smart you are. Folks, one of the most beautiful and also one of the most picturesque of all cowboy classics is the one we have for you today. There's silver on the stage tonight. By the moon above So lie down, Dobie And let me dream Of the one gal I love There's silver on the sage tonight We've been on the trail all day So lie down, Dobie and you dream too of a rain far away, of a rain waiting for you where the streams never go dry and the grass sparkles with you drops in the meadows of the sweet by and by. There's silver on the sage tonight Sprinkled by the moon above So lie down, Logie And let me dream Of the one I love All the rain's waiting for you The grass sparkles with you dry In the meadows of the sweet by and by There's silver on the sage tonight Sprinkled by the moon above So lie down, Logie, and let me of the one I love of the gal I love right now Let's all pay careful heed to Alvino Ray, his steel guitar, and the steel guitar rag. Salvino. And now, here's a mighty pretty song with a mighty pretty thought behind it. And even though it can't be called a cowboy classic in the strictest sense of the word, I'm sure that you'll agree that it has no geographic or occupational bounds as far as appreciation is concerned. Kids? Smile a while you kiss me, Salvino. Down in lovers' lane 
My dear wedding bell will ring so merrily every tear will be a memory so wait and pray each night for me Autry and all the gang from Melody Ranch will be heard over these same stations. This is Charlie Lyon inviting you to be tuned our way. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.